All right, folks, so today I'm going to show you how to manufacture the first part of your scoop project, which is the handle. So we'll work on cutting that out to size, shaping it, giving it a nice dome shape, and going from there. First thing you need to do is find yourself a dowel rod. You'll need to be using the half inch dowel rod. So I have a few different sizes. They're all located on the other side of the room um, next to my door that goes outside. So in order to find out, all right, well, which size is half an inch, find yourself a tape measure, which are located in my tool cabinet up here on the front. Take the tape measure, open it up, measure out the end of the dowel rod. So measure it out. Half an inch should be directly in between one and zero. So this should be half an inch. So we are good to go. After you find a half inch dowel rod, you'll need to measure out the size. So if you look within your engineering journal, you'll find out that we're going through steps one through three. On step one, it says measure out your dowel rod to four inches in length. So with your tape measure and a pencil, measure from the very end of your dowel rod, four inches, make a nice little tick mark. You don't need to draw the whole way around, we're just making a mark where we will be cutting four inches to size. So usually what I like to say is measure twice, cut once, that way we don't make any mistakes. So measure just one more time just to verify, four inches, looks like we're good to go. After that, put your tools back where they belong, we're ready for the next step, which is cutting this thing out to size on the bandsaw. This machine in front of me is known as the bandsaw. It's used for cutting wood apart, so you measure out to whatever size you need to and make a cut. So first thing you need to keep in mind when you come up to the bandsaw is a few things related to safety. First thing I would say is get familiar with the machine. Right here we have the table which will serve as the purpose of making our cuts on top of the table. We have the blade itself which makes the cut itself. We also have the blade guard. We have an upper drive wheel and a lower wheel as well. And we have guards to keep those wheels safe from us when it's moving. And there's also an on and off switch on the bottom of the machine if we want to turn it on or turn it off. So first thing you need to keep in mind when you start working on this machine is adjust the blade guard to the proper height. So what I would usually do is find my material, put it next to the blade without turning the machine on, loosen up this knob right here, counterclockwise. Now this allows you to move the blade guard up and down. Usually I like to, general rule of thumb for me, set my blade guard height about a finger's distance just above our workpiece. That way if we make a mistake and slip, our hand goes into the blade guard instead of the blade. Okay, next step. When we're making our cut, it's important to know, stay away from the cut line, which is the imaginary line that goes from the front of the blade straight back to you. Hands go on either side, never in front. When you're making your cut, especially with your dowel rod for your scoop project, the handle itself, pinch it between your fingers. Usually I like to keep three fingers on either side. Pinch until you see your fingers start to change colors. Now you don't want to have it too loose or else it will actually move out of your hands. You don't need that to happen. Keep it flat on the table, pinch on either side, and you want to line up the blade with that mark that you have made on your dowel rod for the handle. So once you're ready, you'll turn the machine on, slowly push it through, let the blade do all the work. Don't push it too fast, not too slow. Continue on through to the other side, pull both your hands back towards you, turn the machine off, wait for it to stop, and then once it's stopped, you can move on to whatever you have to do next. dowel rod cut the size on the bandsaw, four inches to be exact, first thing I need you to do before you go any further, take a pencil, put your initials at the very end. It doesn't matter which end you pick, as long as you get your initials on there and we can identify it later when we come back to use it, that's fine. So put your initials on the end with a pencil, make sure you make it dark enough so you can see it, just like that, and you should be good to go. All right, next thing we need to do, we need to shape this end into a dome shape, kind of like the top of the dome, the top of your head, top of the helmet, same difference. So first thing you need to do, you need to grab yourself a pair of dowel rod clamp blocks, open up a vise. It doesn't matter which vise you use in my room, any one will work just fine for your use. Open it up. Nice and wide. Take your dowel rod, and now you want to make sure that your initials go facing down. We don't want to shape those off or get rid of them. We want to save those. Put it inside the dowel rod holder, into the vise, tighten the vise up, 
nice and snug so it doesn't go anywhere. Now next thing we'll be doing, next tool we will be using is known as the file. So the file's uses, it's meant for sanding or shaping wood. So with our files, before we use it, usually what I like to do, just proper care and maintenance, use this tool right here, which is known as the file card. Basically the use of the file card, what it does, if you look very closely at the file, there's all kinds of grooves. So the file card is kind of like a hairbrush. It takes all those little pieces that are left over from any like wood material or metal material, clears it out. Make sure when you're using the file card, you go in the direction of the file teeth. If you look at it very closely, they're kind of at it like a diagonal angle. You don't want to go up and down. That kind of, it won't work. So we'll clear everything out with the file card. Make sure you do both sides. After you're completely done, you're ready to start shaping this into a dome shape. File, usually I like to say it's easier to control and easier to use as a two-handed tool. It doesn't matter if you're right-handed or left-handed, it goes either way. For me, I'm right-handed, so I like to put my right hand on the handle down here. And just to help support it, I'll put a few fingers and the other hand on the other side. Files, they cut or work in one direction, and that's in the forward motion. So it won't exactly work if you go back and forth. So you have to make sure you're going up at an angle. Now, usually the way I like to start is just go around and try and break the surface down, get it at like a 45 degree angle, and then eventually after that, we'll try and shape it into that dome shape that we are looking for. So start out by obviously holding it right. You're going in the upright motion, making your way the whole way around the dowel rod, shaping this out into that desired dome shape. So you have to work at it for a little bit until you get it to the point where it is just about there. So work your way around. At some points you may have to actually loosen up the vise, turn the dowel rod in place. That way you can reach the other side. It's a lot easier than trying to stand on your head. And just keep going in that upright motion the whole way around. So like I was saying, work your way around. That two part motion start at the bottom, kind of curve up and around. It's not exactly straight up and down and vertical. You kind of have to curve up and around to get that to a nice, smooth, and even profile. And every now and then, like I said, you might have to loosen up the vise a little bit, turn your dowel rod in place. That way you can get the other sides. And then just continue the process until this thing looks like one even dome shape the whole way around. You get the end of your dowel rod to that perfect dome shape. Not quite perfect, but almost there. You're ready for the next step, which is basically finalizing it and sanding it with sandpaper. Now, what you want to do is open up the vise, put the clamp blocks back where they belong in the box. There's a few different sandpapers that are out there. We have medium and fine. So we're gonna start out first by using the medium. So take your sandpaper. You can either use the sandpaper loose by itself, or you can use the sandpaper on the blocks. It really doesn't matter. So take the sandpaper. Basically, the scratches that we created and the flat spots we made with the file we want to get rid of those and basically smooth it out and make it seamless and perfect. So start out by smoothing the very end of the dowel rod. So get it nice and smoothed out with a medium. And there shouldn't really, it should basically be seamless the whole way around. You shouldn't see any transitions, no flat spots, nothing along those lines. So sand the end of it. Don't forget to sand the lengthwise portion of the dowel rod as well. We want to sand the entire thing. The only thing that we don't sand is the bottom where our initials are. We want to keep those on there. So sand the entire thing. Once you're done sanding with medium sandpaper, you get this thing just about perfect. You're ready to move on to the next grid of sandpaper, which is the fine. Now the fine sandpaper, it just basically takes the scratches that we created with the medium sandpaper, makes them even smaller, and we want to get this thing smooth. A lot of people ask me, well, Mr. Nicholas, how smooth should we make our dowel rod? I usually like to say, well, we like to make it as smooth as glass, so you can either rub your hand on the top of a table or find something very smooth. That's what we're looking for. So go over the entire thing once more with the fine sandpaper. Dress it up nice and smooth. Get this thing really nice and even looking the whole way around. And like I said, we want to get this thing looking perfect. After you're done sanding it with the medium or the fine sandpaper, come check with me. I want to double check just to make sure you're on the right track and this thing is as good as it can get. Once you are finished sanding, the last step, the last thing you need to do after you put your initials on it, make sure the initials are on there. That way if you lose it, you know who it belongs to. Put it in your storage locker. And then down the road, we will be using it later to attach to the back plate portion of our scoop.